it's time for my weekly feng shui astrology and timing tip. Today's discussion was about cause networking and marketing in the workplace and how that matters to your customers and your referral partners. So let's face it, people do have choices in who they want to do business with and if you and your company stand for a larger purpose, people are more likely to do business with you. So how can feng shui and astrology help you with that? Well, there's three branches of classical feng shui. It's through person, space, and time. In other words, your astrology, your space, and doing the right action at the right time. So the first thing I would suggest is go grab your astrology chart at www freebusinessastrology.com and today we're going to look at the year of birth of your natal chart. Now the year of birth in business, fun, in business feng shui and business astrology represents your marketing, your branding, your reputation, people's first impressions of you, and the right way to connect with people through networking. So it's a very important um, aspect of people first meeting you. And this pillar is made up of one of the five elements that's gonna be yin or yang, and then underneath that, that element, there's gonna be one of the 12 animals of the zodiac. But today, again, we're just looking at that top element of the year of birth, just that one first pillar. So if you have fire in that first uh, pillar of the year of the birth, this means that people actually can see you because fire is usually very bright and, and very visible and it may be easier for you to tra attract people that are gonna listen to you. An earth element on this top is gonna be uh, more of a nurturing type of person and much more approachable. But if you have a metal on top of the year of birth, this may mean that you're not as approachable, maybe a little bit more of a, of a shield in front of you, but this is the person that's gonna abide by the rules. They're great for setting up structures and quite altru altruistic and noble. So it's a very good pillar to have as well. And then the water element of the year of birth means that you're a deep thinker. You're full of wisdom and probably a good spokesperson for your business or the cause that you're trying to help. Or if you're a wood element of the year of birth, that means that you're probably a natural born networker. We love the natural born networker and you can connect with people easily and quite naturally, but you'd only be one of those five elements and that would be in that first pillar. The elements also have a timeliness about them in this fire monkey year of 2016. The, those favorable elements are fire, wood, and metal. Those are the three top ones that we're gonna be looking for. So if you're one of those three, then that means you're gonna get an additional boost to help you in your endeavors. So ideally, you wanna take action when things are in your favor, and the strategy is to make the most of your marketing and branding and networking efforts in 2016. If you are a fire, wood, or metal element in that very first um, pillar of the year of birth of your chart. So then once you combine the top element with one of the 12 animals in the Chinese Zodiac, there's gonna be 60 possible combinations. So that's gonna further define how you relate to your networks and marketing goals, which I do with my clients in a personal reading. That might be just a little bit too much for a quick tip today. So then next we're gonna look at the feng shui of your space. So every business needs people to buy their products and services, right? So I strongly rely on the annual feng shui for my clients because it's gonna give you quick results that's gonna transform your life. And it could even last a lifetime by the decisions you make today. So if you're looking for partnerships and people to help in your cause, go to the southeast area of your home or office and you use it simply use that area. That's where you're going to work. That's where you're going to, uh, you know, hang out. But this is really the proper way to use classical feng shui. Use the good areas of the space and avoid the challenging ones, period. That's what you need to do. So here's a common question I get all the time where, you know, my bathroom is located there or that sector is missing. So in other words, the building's not square or rectangle and architecturally that, that sector is missing. So you want to follow the sage advice of my feng shui grandmaster, Dato Jo Yap, do what you can and stop worrying about what you can't. So in other words, that if you don't have that space available to you, you can't use it. So just stop worrying about it and we need to find another way. So we could go to the East Sector in 2016. That's a fantastic area that you wanna increase and strengthen for your cause networking efforts. 
And it's worth mentioning also that you want to avoid the challenging areas of the annual energies of 2016, and that's the Northeast sector. So you want to avoid that because it can create problems in health, finances, and relationships. So Northeast in 2016, we want to avoid. So the big brush strokes here is use the good areas of your space, avoid the challenging ones, and that alone can help you improve your results. And finally, you know, if you're starting a large marketing campaign or a new project, start a new project using the Time Blazer Business Management System. And basically, you're going to use a good day to launch that particular project. So you can go get a sample of that at bit.ly forward slash free month at a glance, all lowercase. And then you can choose either initiate or success days to get you started off on a good foot. So that's a wrap for today. I'd like to thank you all for listening and calling in today. We really do appreciate that. Tune in next week for another exciting episode on Illuminating Feng Shui. And until next week, may good chi follow.